<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog in box. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Hi, Year 11. Welcome back to McGrathematics for your next video lesson. We're starting off with some flashback questions from the last video. See if you can pause the video and find the value of these for logarithms. For question D, you will need a calculator. Okay, let's run through them. So for the first one, log base four of 16, this question is essentially asking us four to the power of what gets us an answer of 16. So the answer for this one is two because four to the power of two is equal to 16. So we're using that same cyclical method we used from last video, four to the two is equal to 16. Question B is a bit trickier. Question B is asking us 16 to the power of what gets us an answer of four. 16 to the what is equal to four. The answer to this one is gonna be a half because four is the square root of 16. So 16 to the power of one half is equal to four. And for C, we're asking three to the power of what gets us an answer of three. This one's gonna be one. When your base and your subject match in your logarithm, you're gonna have an answer of one every single time. And the last one, ln2, in the last video, we talked about how ln stands for log, uh, logarithm natural. So this means log base e. So this is the same thing as saying log base e of two. This is one of the two logarithms we can do on our calculator. So you can type in ln2 and you'll get an answer of about 0 0.69, which in this business we call classic comedy. So this means that e to the power of 0 0.69 will get you an answer roughly around two. Okay, for today's lesson, we are looking at some properties of logarithms, which we're going to call logarithm laws. So there is quite a lot of content in this video, so it might be a bit of a long one. So please don't rush through because you will get overwhelmed because there's a lot of steps in all of these examples. So a bit of a tough one today. Let's see how we go. Okay, looking at our logarithm laws. The first one is log base x of a plus log base x of b. Now, a cool property of logarithms is we can actually combine these two expressions together by multiplying a and b. So this is the exact same thing as log base x of a, b. Uh, if you wanna know why, this is essentially just a different version of index laws because logarithms and indices are kind of, you know, they're, they're inverse operations. So they're, these are kind of like the inverse of um, index laws. I can prove this to you later in class if you want to, but for now, I'm just gonna assume that you will believe me. For the next one, we've got log base x of a take away log base x of b. For this one, we can once again combine them into a single logarithm by dividing the subject. So we're gonna do log base x of a divided by b, which I'm gonna rise a fraction. Okay, so when you have two logarithms with the same base, if they're adding, you can combine them and multiply the subjects. If they're subtracting, you can combine them and divide the subjects. So two really useful properties. This next one is an extension on that first property with repeated multiplication. So if we have log base x of a to the power of b, um, a useful property we have is that power b can actually come down the front of the expression. So log of a to the b is the same thing as b times log x to the a. Okay, I call this property the blogger rule because we've got b log a and it's really, really useful. So when you've got a power in the subject of your logarithm, the power can come down the front if you need to. Or vice versa, if we have something at the front of the logarithm and we wanna put it into the logarithm, we can use it as a power, which we're gonna do a couple times today. Okay, next one is a bit less common, but um, it's still a logarithm law. If we have log base x of one over a, this is the same thing as negative log a. The reason for this is that one over a can be written as a to the minus one, and then the power of minus one comes down the front. So we're essentially using this um, property up here with a power of minus one. That's what one over a is. Power comes down the front. Okay, up next, we've got a familiar one from last video. Um, you may remember that I said uh, log of anything to, uh, sorry, log base anything of one is always going to be zero because anything to the power of zero gets you one. And another familiar one from last video, when your base and your subject of your logarithm match, the answer will always be equal to one because x to the one is equal to x. So the really important ones are these top three here. The bottom two we used yesterday. This fourth one is pretty rare. 
Um, but these top three are really, really important. We're gonna use them many times today. Let's have a go at some examples. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, it is really important that we try and get comfortable with these properties, especially the top three, because they are properties which are not on... <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, because they are not on the formula sheet. I apologize in advance for not editing that cough out because I cannot be bothered. Anyway, our first example, we've got uh, simplifying log base 10 of A plus four log base 10 of B, take away three log base 10 of C. Now, when we have multiple logarithm terms and we're asked to simplify, what we're trying to do here is, is we are trying to combine them together using those properties, okay? So first thing we need to do is, you'll notice that in the properties we just looked at, um, in front of the logarithms, there weren't any numbers, okay? That's important. That means for these expressions here, the four in front of log base 10 of B and the three in front of log base 10 of C, we need to move them so that we can combine this, this stuff together, okay? So what we're gonna use is this third property right here. When you have something out the front of your logarithm, you can put it into the power of the subject of the logarithm. So we're using the blogger property right here. So this four out the front can come up and become the power of the B. And the three here can come up the front, oh sorry, out the top and become the power of the C. So now we've got log base 10 of B to the four and log base 10 of C to the three. Now we can start doing some combining because when your logarithms have the same base, you can use those combination properties from the last slide where you can multiply or divide your subjects. So we can combine these two as a product because we have a plus. So we're gonna have log base 10 of A times B to the four, which we've got right here. And now because we have log base 10, take away log base 10, we can combine these two logarithms together and have our subjects as a division. So we've got log base 10 of a b to the four divided by c cubed. Okay, so the numbers at the front went to the powers, the sum turned together into a product, and then the difference came together as a division or a quotient. Okay, so we just did all three in one example. Let's have a go at another one. Okay, for this one, we've got log base five of 100, take away log base five of four. So once again, we have two logarithms, they have the same base, so we can start doing some combinations. We are subtracting, which means we can combine these two logarithms together as a division. So we'll do log base five of 100 divided by four. And of course, 100 divided by four is 25. And now we can figure out what is log base five of 25. Well, it's asking us five to the power of what gets you an answer of 25. The answer to that is two. 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 25, and that is the answer to the question. Okay, up next, we've got another tough one. We've got log base 3 of uh, square root 3 minus log base 3 of 1 ninth, and then log base 3 of 27. Now, it may be a bit hard to see, but these three subjects all have one thing in common, and they are all actually powers of 3. So what we can do is we can write root three as three to the power of a half. We can write um, one over nine. We can write that as one over three squared. And so we can then write it as three to the power of minus two. And 27 is three to the power of three. So we've got three to the half. We've got one over three squared, which we'll write as three to the minus two. And we've got 27 is three cubed. Okay, now we can bring those powers out the front of our logarithms using our blogger rule. So log base three of three to the half, we can put the half at the front and have a half times log base three of three. Same thing for these two terms, the minus two, we're gonna bring down the front. So we've got minus, minus two times log base three of three. And we've got the power of three on the last term coming down the front. So we've got three log base three of three. So many threes. Now we have to think to ourselves, what is the answer to log base three of three? What do you get when the base and the subject match? We said before uh, that this always turns into one because three to the power of one is equal to three. So this turns into a half, we get minus minus two turns into plus two, and then on the end we get three. Because remember, log base three of three is just one. So this is three times one. Putting those uh, three together, we get an answer of five and a half. So this top line here is just a really, really confusing way of writing five and a half. 
Okay, sweet. Um, if you feel like you're kind of getting it, you can pause the video, have a go at A and B. C is a bit of a trick question, but see if you can apply some of the logarithm properties in A and B to try and simplify your expression um, a little bit. If you're not real confident, you can wait for me to go through them again, and then you can try some of the exercises. Okay, for the first one. So all the bases are three, which is good. Um, the problem here is that once again, we have a number out the front of this logarithm. We want to have um, just ones out the front. So we're going to put that four up to the power of the two using the blogger property. And now we can say, well, I'm going to combine these two together because I'm subtracting two logarithms with the same base. I'm going to put them together as a division. So two to the power of four is 16 divided by four. That's these two logarithms combined. Now 16 divided by four turns into four. And now we can combine these two logarithms because they are plusing, we can multiply the subjects. So we're gonna have log base three of four times 16, which works out to be log base three of 64. And three to the power of what could you 64? I don't think we can get a nice answer. So we're just gonna leave it as that for now. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we are. Okay, next one, log base 10 of 800, take away three log base 10 of two. Okay, sweet. So once again, we wanna combine these two logarithms, but the issue is the number out the front. So hopefully you can see that once again, we're gonna put this three up into the power of the two. So we have log base 10 of 800, take away log base 10 of two to the power of three from the three at the front. Okay, two to the power of three is eight, and now we can combine these two logarithms because they are subtracting. We can divide our two subjects. So we have log base 10 of 800 divided by eight. That works out to be 100, and this one's a bit nicer because now we can actually get an actual answer just by doing a bit of maths. So log base 10 of 100, uh, we're asking ourselves 10 to the power of what gets us 100, and so the answer is two. 10 squared is equal to 100. Okay, now for the trick one, we've got log base 10 of five plus one. Now when we're simplifying, we like to combine two terms together. The issue is that this is a logarithm and one is not a logarithm. So how are we going to combine them? Well, we've got to be clever. We've got to think to ourselves, what is a way I could write one as a logarithm with base 10? And here's how we do it. We write it as log base 10 of 10. Like we said earlier, when the base and the subject of your logarithm match, this answer is going to be one. So log base 10 of 10 is just a confusing way of writing one. The reason I've written it as that is because now I have two logarithms with the same base. They are plusing together so I can combine them and make a product of their subjects. So we'll have log base 10 of five times 10. So we've got log base 10 of 50. Um, again, this isn't a nice one, so we're probably not going to get an answer. Well, we, oh, we will get an answer for this. It'll just be a decimal, which we don't really care about for now. Okay, up next, um, some tricky true or false questions. I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure out whether these statements are factual or fictional. Um, I'm going to run through them pretty shortly. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please pause the video. Okay, first one, log base 6 of 1 is equal to 0. Well, is 6 to the power of 0 equal to 1? Yes, it is. So that one is indeed true. That was one of our properties from the very first slide. Question B, a half of log base three of 10 is equal to log base three of five. Well, five is half of 10, so it makes sense, doesn't it? Well, let's think, what can we do with a half out the front of the logarithm? What can we, where can we move it? We can move it up into the power of this logarithm. So this one works out to be false because the half is gonna come at the front, or at the top, sorry. And so we're gonna have 10 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 10. And the square root of 10 is not five. The square root of 10 is about three point something. So the half multiplying is not gonna half the subject of your logarithm. It's going to square root it actually because of indices and stuff. Okay, question C is similar to question C from the previous examples. Again, we're going to write one as uh, log base five of five. Then we can combine these two terms as log base five of five times four which works out to be log base five of 20. So this one is in fact true. So one can be written as log base five of five. We can multiply the two subjects and five times four is 20. And question D, well done if you said this one is false. 
So we can write one over 25 as five to the power of negative two, because we have one over five squared. The minus two we can move out the front. So we have minus two times log base five of five. This once again is just one. So we get an answer of minus two, not equal to negative a half. So close, but this one is indeed false. Okay, last little bit of this lesson, uh, still really important, is called changing the base. This is all about how we can do different logarithms with our calculator. I spoke last lesson about how on our Casio calculators that we use in class, we can only do log base 10, which is just log on the calculator, or we can do log base e, which is ln. So if we wanted to figure out the value of log base three of eight, there isn't a log base three button on our calculator. So we've got to be clever and we've got to work around this. Here's how we do it. We're going to rearrange this. We're going to say, well, if log base three of eight is equal to something, let's call it x. This is another way of saying three to the power of x is equal to eight. So this right here is the rearranged version of this logarithmic equation. Now we're going to take this exponential equation, three to the power of x is equal to eight. We are going to take log base 10 of both sides. So log base 10 of the left, log base 10 of the right. Now on the left, we've got log base 10 of three to the x. What do you think we can do with that power of x? Where can we move it? Using our blogger property for the hundredth time, we can put the x down the front and have x out the front of log base 10 of three. Now we can move that log base 10 of three across to the other side by dividing because it's multiplying with the x. So we end up with x equal to log base 10 of eight over log base 10 of three. Now the reason I chose log base 10 is because that's one of the logarithms that our calculator can do. I could have done log base e, but I decided to do log base 10. So if you wanna find the value of log base three of eight, you don't have to do this process every time. It's a really cool shortcut. All you've got to do is log eight over log three. So type this into your calculator. You're just going to be pressing log eight on top of the fraction and log three on the bottom. You'll get an answer of something around 1.89. Okay, so log of the subject over log of the base. It's called changing the base and it's a way you can get your answer um, with a clever workaround. So we're going to be doing this a fair bit. So I'd suggest you try and get comfortable with getting this answer by doing this. Let's do a bit of practice to um, use this property. So it's called change of base formula. Like I said, log base A of B, doesn't matter what A and B are, we're just gonna type log A over log B. And remember that log actually means log base 10, but it just says log on the calculator for some reason. Okay, cool, some practice questions. So first one, log base three of 20, we want to find the answer. So into our calculator, all we've got to punch in is log 20 over log three, which is really log base 10 of 20 over log base 10 of three. Calculator tells us the answer is 2.727 roughly. What this means is three to the power of about 2.7 gets you an answer around 20. So we've found the missing link with a clever workaround called change of base. Same thing for question B, we want to find log base eight of 32. So we just got to punch in log base 32, oh sorry, just log 32 over log eight. Calculator tells us the answer is five thirds. So eight to the power of five thirds is equal to 32. Beautiful. Okay, question C, once again, we're just going to type in log of 1 25th for the top and for the bottom we're doing log of five Calculator will tell us the answer is minus two because five to the power of minus two is equal to one over 25, which if you think about it does actually make sense. Okay, question D is called an exponential equation. We'll be doing more of these in the next video. This is just a little one to warm up. So we've got six to the power of X is equal to 60. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take both sides of the equation and we're gonna do log base six. The reason I'm doing log base six is because I want to cancel out the six to the power of on this side here. Okay, so log base six of six, the log base six and the six to the power are gonna cancel out like from last lesson, the left-hand side is gonna turn into X. Okay, so these two guys are canceling out. Now to find the answer of log base six of 60, using our trick, we can type into our calculator, log 60 over log six, Calculator will give us an answer. It's about 2.285. So six to the power of 2.285 
is roughly 60. And there you go. So there is all the content for today's lesson. Obviously a pretty big one. There are heaps of exercise questions for you to practice in 805. Hit me up if you need more help because um, this is a pretty tough one at first, I've, I find. So please don't freak out if you're not getting it straight away. It is a tough lesson. Okay, thanks heaps if you watched that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao for now.